And this one is particularly special, not only because we are speaking to one of the founding partners, the handsome, funny one, Tony, <laughs> um, but it's a special birthday celebration of Bella and Duke. The Pet Health and Happiness Podcast from Bella and Duke, keeping you at the cutting edge of pet nutrition, behavior, and health with expert interviews, mythbusters, and more to ensure your pet lives a long, happy, healthy life. Tony, happy birthday and welcome to this episode. How are you? I'm great, thanks, and happy birthday to you too. Oh my goodness. I tell you, when we were looking, driving around, various parts of the UK looking for facilities that met our standards, who'd have realised that nearly 30 million meals later, we would be having this conversation for a special incredible. edition birthday episode. How incredible is that? And how quick has four years gone? Absolutely amazing, actually. And what wow. we've done in that time has been incredible. And the well, community out there that supported us and what they've done, backing Bell and Duke and being so positive about things and getting people along to raw food as well, it's fantastic. Well, before we even go any further, I'm just going to say thank you to our community because, uh, Tony, and this is one of the many things you've inspired me on, is you've always said that customer feedback is absolutely essential for our growth and you want to hear how people are experiencing things. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for being such a positive part of our growth. Um, and helping us on our mission, which is just to radically change the lives of pets for better health. Exactly, exactly. And I would like to echo that as well. And that's what keeps us going is the stories that we get from all of our customers that come in and tell us what a difference it's made, moving them on to Bell and Duke. Oh. And uh, the positiveness of it all, it's just been brilliant. And that's what keeps the whole team going. And we're all proud about that fact. I, I confess we've had some emotional, tearful moments, haven't we, Tony, when people have written in or phoned up and told us of these mad, mad success stories. Um, I, but I guess let's just go right back to the beginning. What was the whole reason we started or you guys came up with this incredible life-saving idea to start a raw food? Well, it came from, uh, it came from service. Um, I, I had lost my dog Barney uh, six months previously, all of a sudden, and then uh, then Gus, my Labrador, he got uh, cancer, he got a, a mast cell tumour, was given three months to live, and uh, we, we thought this isn't, this, is, this isn't right, Gus was only five at the time, uh, sorry he was six at the time, and uh, we uh, we, we, we thought we can't lose Gus, and he went on chemotherapy. But before all this, we looked at uh, raw feeding and what we were feeding our dogs. And Mark, Mark also lost, he lost his dog Morph uh, around the same time. And it was something that brought us together. We were friends before that, but it brought us together. And uh, we felt, well, what are we doing for our dogs? And they're not with us for very long. And uh, we wanted to extend that for as long as possible. I've always had dogs my whole life. and. Uh, I was quite shocked when I lost Barney uh, because he was one day he was running up the mountain with me because we used to walk up the back mountain here every single morning and Barney would always go out, out in front he was a retriever and uh, Gus would be behind us a Labrador walking at his pace and uh, all of a sudden all of a sudden Barney wasn't walking we were running in front of us he was behind us and uh, a week later he was dead and he had a, a he had a really black, we took him for an x-ray that, that day, I picked him up and took him, took him to the vet. And uh, he, he had, a, he had a, a, a dark shadow on his chest and the vet said there was nothing that they could do for him. And he died, he died about a week later. And uh, wow. that was a real, poof, wow, I can't believe this. I've lost a dog at such a young age. I, couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. And that really got me thinking about what are we feeding what are we feeding our dogs and what am I doing about it? And I started to make this raw food my, myself at home. And then the next thing happened was Gus got this cancer. Oh, I can't believe this. Uh, and that really got me determined to do something about it. And that really is the pain from where it came from uh, of sadness, but the joy of uh, doing something positive 
uh, in my life. Like, it's, it, I just feel great about that. That, that. That's what drives me. Now, Gus, who is uh, who, who 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 had had cancer uh, in twenty sixteen, um, he he's with us today, and he he's coming up for twelve, and he's fitter today than he was back then. I mean, he's in the office with me just now, flying over there. And he he has he now has we now have uh, another two dogs. We've got Alfie or uh, Wesley, who who is uh, who's been raw fed since the age of three months, and we've got uh, and he's now Alfie's Alfie's now coming up for for five, and we've got just over five, and we've got uh, we've got Ted, who's three years old, a little Norfolk Terrier, and uh, he's been raw fed since. Right from day one, and Teddy, let's get this started up. Now, this is a fully grown Norfolk who is six and a half kilos, or actually six kilos, this little fella, all right, big boy. And uh, hey, Teddy, it's been a while, I've missed you during lockdown. And I've got this tracker thing on him just now because he chases, chased the fox this morning. Uh, but he he was that size when we got him, I remember. Yeah, do you remember? And he picked him up and he was that size. We brought him all the way home. He, he, we, we picked him up. He's a Norfolk Terrier and we went all the way to Norfolk to get him, which is unbelievable. <laughs> I drove so far. And we came back and that's a little guy that size. We fed him raw that night and he took to it straight away. It was only, what, what, how old are they when you pick them? Is it eight weeks that they are? But when, when you pick the dogs up and he was a tiny little fella and he straight into raw, loved it. And it's never been fed anything else since. Uh, and it just it's just great to see. And you know what's really really quite interesting about about these these guys is the little fellas. But you pick them up and they're absolutely solid. The muscle is solid. There's no fat in them at all. It's absolutely solid. So I am. What drives me and, and, and why am, am I so proud about Bell and Duke is because out of a moment of absolute sadness, we did something positive, and we keep doing that every day. And that's what we drive and the pride that we have as a company is that within that, all of our all of our staff know that they're doing something positive. And I had something really someone someone said to me some, something to me great a couple of weeks ago. One of our suppliers, one of the big suppliers said to me, you know, Tony, even they tell our they tell our farmers where their where their meat's going, uh, that 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 the products are also going into Bell Engine. And their farmers and people in the factory are proud of the fact that they are also supplying Bell Engine. And I think that's great. It goes all the way down the supply chain. Uh, Tony, that is inspirational. And you know, that story never ceases to get me, even though, you know, I joined you guys very early on and I know it by heart. And I think that's a good expression. We, we all know it by heart. Uh, it's, it's, if you will, the engine room which drives Bella and Duke and uh, to be some part of something which is bigger than ourselves. Yeah. is is really a luxury 100 uh, percent i'm sure barney would be extremely pleased to know that he has driven so much positive change and actually influenced so many other pets because i'm going to make a really really big claim here and i'd like to say that <clears throat> in the last four years all of us at bella and duke have actually taken raw feeding mainstream um people looked at us as if we were crazy people um, and dangerous or mavericks when actually we've been anything but. It's been the other side of it. We are so incredibly assiduous about testing the food. Uh, you've been absolutely ultra dedicated about how you source the food, how you interact with the suppliers, how you all know that you know all of them on a first name basis, some of them for 25 years. Uh, it, it's been anything but Maverick. And I think the consistency and the quality uh, and, the, and the overwhelming ex evidence that we've produced, it, it's taken raw mainstream. And that for me is just priceless. Well, what, what really hit me was about 12 months ago, Saturday morning, watching Saturday Kitchen, and, and the chef at Saturday Kitchen goes, I've got to leave space in my fridge for raw dog food. And I thought, wow, wouldn't have heard that about five years ago. That, that was amazing. <laughs> and everybody's talking about it now. 
E- exactly. That's that's absolutely incredible, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm looking left here, Tony, because we've got a load of questions which have come in, especially for you. I think people just want an excuse to talk to you because you like to hide in the shadows or you're just too busy down the new factory. Um, one of the questions actually is <clears throat> exactly about the new factory and uh, how this supports our mission to provide the best nutrition for pets. Um, our new factory, what, what we've done with the new factory, we've put a process in place. Um, and this is this is really what has been key for me right from the, the word go is when I want to basically take a product from slaughter to 48 days from slaughter to freeze. And then the next time it's defrosted, is when it's defrosted in the home, being fed to the dog. Now, what does that mean? Is that means that it comes into us in frozen blocks at minus 18 degrees centigrade, and we then process that frozen all the way through the system, and then it goes, it gets packed into into these little trays that we've got now, and those little trays it goes uh, leave our factory below zero. And that it goes back in the freezer again. So it's never defrosted. So that means when you get it at home or when customers get it at home, it's only two days old from when it, when it was slaughtered. So it's completely fresh meat. Therefore, it's as fresh as we can possibly make it. And what that does is stops bacteria, minimizes bacterial growth and makes the product as safe as possible as we can do for the dogs. Now, what what traditionally would happen is people would bring meat in, maybe fresh, chilled, but that might be slaughtered, might arrive at the factory two, three days, might get used a couple of days later, which means it's only got four or five days life, or four or five days left already been used up. We at Bell and Juke are happy to guarantee five days in the fridge on defrost. Not many others will do that. It's because they haven't got the kit and the systems that we've put in place to make that happen. And that's one of the things I'm proud of, that we've made a, we've made a factory that's very, very uh, um, health, uh, food safe from that perspective. I, I mean, realistically, we could call it a, an industry leading innovation because you dreamt up this idea and you brought it to bear. And I remember there was, I think, there are a couple of times you you may have broken a little bit of machinery experimenting, Tony, but that stays between us. We've never mentioned that on air. Uh, Chris, keep that in. <laughs> um, well, if you were to walk into our factory, right, it would be the machinery that we've got in there is is at the at, at the same standard as the best factories producing human food in the UK. Yes. The state of the art. Now, because of confinement or uh, isolation or whatever we call it, I've not yet had the luxury of building the factory which for, or visiting the factory, which is super frustrating because everybody who's Scotland-based has raged and, and about it and said, wow, uh, they've been blown away. I've heard that from vets. I've heard that from inspectors. I've heard that from other visitors. I've heard that from filmmakers who've gone into it and said, that was entirely not what I was expecting. It's like visiting a spaceship, a spaceship for <laughs> health. Well, I don't know about that so much, but yes, maybe it is for some people. But um, what, what I think is you could put all the best kit in the world in there, but our staff, our people in there, they are actually care about what they're doing. Um, our staff, all get uh, all, all all feed the dogs raw dog food from Bell and Duke, which is great. And the number of times I go in there, I'm going in there later today, and uh, people come up to me and say, "Ah, the dog's looking great on oh, it. It's fantastic. My dog has benefited so much since it's been on since it's been on raw, and you cannot I can't believe it." And some of our staff in the factory are some of our biggest biggest supporters, and they're proud. There's a pride in the job that they're doing, and yeah. that's what's important. They, because they have their own dogs, they're proud of what they're doing and the stories that they see out there because they're part of the community as well. Uh, on that note, Tony, I had a friend come out to visit who uh, lives in the UK and feeds Bella and Duke. And he said to me, he goes, I, I didn't realise 
that my dog's wind problem was actually down to the food we were feeding and not the fact there were Boston Terriers. And I did say to him, wait for it. We are designing a food sneak preview, which will specifically benefit think uh, dogs like the brachiocephalic breeds like Boston Terriers, pugs, French bulldogs, um, because we're aware of their digestive issues and we're making, whilst all of our food is suitable for them, in fact, it's optimal, we've decided to rip it up. And with the benefits of this new factory, we're very close to launching a new range, which is going to benefit them extraordinarily. But to hear that feedback, just unprompted, unrequested, said they've stopped snoring. They're now allowed to sleep in the bedroom. They've stopped farting. They're now allowed to sleep in the bedroom. And he said the skin smells differently. When I've got them in the car, they just smell totally different. He said everybody was telling me about raw food. And obviously he said, you, uh, as a Bella and Duke raw feeder, were raging about it, but everybody talks about their product. He said within two weeks, the dogs had just changed. And that's the thing, Rowan. That's the thing. It's, it's not, not until you see the light, <laughs> as I yeah. call it, that you think, my God, I've been living in this darkness for so long. I've been doing the wrong thing. And it sounds a bit evangelical, and I apologize for that, but it, it's so true. And uh, the smell, you know, um, Gus. Gus, my lad, he, he used to he, he could smell Gus when he walked into the house. Can't smell him anymore. Um, um, because he, he, know, he now smells beautiful. He now he smells fantastic now. Uh, you want to give him a big kiss and a cuddle. His fur feels better. You put your hands through his fur, you don't get this grime on, on your hands. It's like a proper fur coat. Fantastic. Oh, he, 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 Gus, he, he looks like the Dark Prince. He's like a velvet wagging machine. And for those of you who think that Tony's dog's got a tail, let me reassure you, it's not. It's a giant rudder. And I would, exactly what it is. It's a happiness rudder. Um, <laughs> um, I think we've covered quite a few of these questions, Tony, just by mm -hmm. talking about the things we're passionate about. Um, one of them is how do you talk, uh, how do you tackle rumors uh, around things like salmonella and stuff in raw food? Now, I don't know if rumor is the right word, but Tony, I'm gonna to kick that ball over to you. Okay. What, what, do we, what do we say about that? Well, I think, I think it's a question, it's, it's a good question, but I think we've gotta break it down a bit. And we've gotta break it down from the point of view that, uh, let's go back to, Let's go back to the beginning of the process, and that's the farms. And good animal husbandry on the farms tries to eliminate and mitigate and minimize the amount of salmonella that, that, that can creep into animals, etc., and creep into the flocks. And a factory will test, will test for salmonella, and they will test the flock. And if the flock doesn't pass, it doesn't go into human food chain. And then we buy from human human food chain suppliers. Uh, and we do as much as we can. However, why, why, why do, why do we have to recall in the pet food industry uh, product if it's got salmonella in it? And why do, why, why is it a government insistence that we recall it? It's got nothing to do, really, with the harm it does to dogs, because dogs don't really have any issues with salmonella. It's, it's a minuscule thing. Uh, for a dog to suffer from salmonella, and it would tend to be a dog who's got a very bad immune system, a very bad gut, and is very unwell. Dogs, dogs, they go around, they sniff stuff, they lick stuff, they can digest product with salmonella in it. It's not a problem for them to do that. So why do we have to recall if there's a problem out there? Why does the industry have to recall? There's been one recently, um, and I have to say, there's more recalls on salmonella on dry food than there is on raw food. Tony, but, just to interject there, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, for those of you listening, there's been a recall recently, but not Bella and Duke. No, uh, no. Yeah, it's been a competitor, and we wouldn't even call them a competitor because we see us all as working together. Thank um, you for that, and, that's, and that is right, and I need to clarify that, yeah. But why, why, why has there been a recall recently on this? And, and, it's, and it's all to do with the fact that government is protecting human beings because what they're saying is they do not want raw food in your kitchen they don't want raw food in your fridge because you're handling raw food to give into your dog and potentially you could be touching something that could potentially have salmonella in it now 
the other the other concern that they've got is that the dog could eat that food or has some and they'd be a carrier of it and then lick you in the face or whatever and then pass that on or, or come through its stools and you would touch the stools and, and not wash your hands. There is salmonella out there. It's going to be there all the time. It's, it, it's natural. It's like oxygen. It's, it's out there. 100%. We do everything we can, we do everything we can to, to minimize it as much as possible. But when you look at when you look at you open your fridge door and you see in there a whole chicken, or you see a duck, or you see a bit of beef, there's potentially salmonella in that as well. And you're going to go and cook it. Now, what we ask people to do is just follow hygiene guidelines and make sure you wash the surfaces, you wash the boards, you wash the knives properly, and you wash your hands. That is common sense. And that's what people have to do to, to mitigate or minimize any infection from any raw meat at all yeah or I, any or even 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 a dry food they should be doing the same thing with that as well yeah and because, let's oh sorry tony i interrupted you there was a little oh, bit of a delay that's fine uh, because that 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 is that is critical that people look after themselves um the dog the dog can eat product that may potentially have salmonella in it not a problem We've not got an issue with that unless it's a very unwell dog, but it's human beings we're trying to protect here. And that's the emphasis on it. So when people say, oh, I don't want to feed my dog raw because it's got salmonella in it. Well, there's more incidents of dry dog food around the world being recalled because of salmonella incidents than raw. That may be because there's more dry dog food being sold. Maybe. I don't know. But that's something that we've got to we've got to be honest with ourselves. Uh, in in this it's not about it's not about um uh, the, the the dog that the governments are worried about it's about human beings just do right and follow good hygiene guidelines yeah, tony that's a really great answer and i it's it's so important we avoid the scaremongery and just stick to the facts because that's how we empower our clients to make positive change. And I personally think that the false fears around bacteria are the number one cause for people not coming into raw feeding. So it really, we've got to kind of burst that little false bubble. The, 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 just to recap, for those of you uh, listening who just want clarification, the salmonella and bacteria out there all the time. If your dog is swimming in a lake or river, they're probably being more exp exposed to different types of bacteria and viruses than that are ever going to be in raw food. Uh, it's all about the balance. Uh, dogs are super equipped to deal with all of this. If you want to lower your risk, well, just wash your hands and don't touch your face or your eyes before you've washed your hands. Keep it separate from other foods as exactly as you would do with the food you're eating. There's zero difference. And on that note, there is zero difference because the food you're feeding your dog from Bella and Duke is sourced from the human supply chain and it's all checked before it goes to you. So frankly, it, you can snatch victory from the jaws of victory just following simple hygiene steps. It's no more complicated than that, is it, Tony? No, it's not. And the other thing I, I would just reiterate again also, Rowan, is don't let the dogs lick your face, eyes in your mouth and stuff, and and, and don't don't do any just don't pick up dog poo and with your hand and then touch your face with it. Not that anyone's gonna do that, but that's the sort of thing that they're worried about. <laughs> well, you you know, um I not that I would do this uh or recommend, you know, touching dog poo with your hand anyway. Uh, but by the time any salmonella, let's say, for instance, your dog picks up salmonella because it's swimming in a river and it eats some goose poo. Uh, by the time it comes out the back end of your dog, its immune system has dealt with it anyway because it has such an overwhelming array of bacteria in there, which is why they get to go around eating horse and cow shit and feeling great on it. They see all the B vitamins. We go, they, ah. Uh, when actually it's doing the dogs normally quite a lot of good. So next thing, um, Tony, a couple of quick questions to finish this off because I know you're busy and you're heading off to the factory. Uh, do we have any more natural B&D remedies coming out? Well, Ron, 
that's really you, really, isn't it? Uh, yes, we do, and I'm very excited about them. Watch this space. We've got some really, I think, cutting edge. Well, I don't want to say I think. I'm being modest here. I know the cutting edge because nobody else is doing them. Uh, we've got some cutting edge remedies, supplements, and there are going to be some product innovations in our food, which nobody else, as far as we're, we're aware, in the whole world is doing. But that is going to remain a secret between Tony and I until they're ready for your consumption. Um, Tony, any more bone broth flavours? Um, no, nothing planned. Nothing planned for now. Um, we've got lamb and beef at the moment. Nothing planned. Nothing planned. I suppose um, it's something we can look at in the future. But uh, no, nothing. Nothing in the in the pipeline. Okay, um, we do have some ideas around it, but as ever. Uh, the planning and the preparation and the testing uh, take more time than the actual delivery. So, guys, we have a whole host of exciting plans ahead, but we're going to do one of them at a time, ensure it's absolutely 100% awesome before delivering it to you. Um, Tony, I think we can draw a line there. Happy birthday. For those of you still listening who haven't fallen asleep, we're going to put a link to the birthday competition below. Uh, please do enter that. Tony, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your inspirational leadership, all you do. Uh, it's really it's a pleasure working alongside you, and I can say that from the heart. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of that. But I, I'd like to say also thanks to our community as well, that who, who really... Keep, keep keep sending those stories and uh, keep backing Bell and you keep backing Raw. Keep being so positive about it and trying to get as many dogs onto Raw as possible across across the country. And, and that is, you guys are are out there really pushing it and really making a difference. Um, and I think uh, I was speaking to someone uh, yesterday actually was telling me that their wife works in uh, in a vet, uh, and uh, she was saying to me that, uh, or he was saying to me that. Uh, um, raw has really gone from the peripheral over the last few years to, to core, in, in near the core. And so customers coming in keep asking questions about it. You keep asking the vets questions. And it's about having vets on board on, on this. And we need to work harder at that somehow to convince those guys what the right thing is to do. So one of the things we're going to be doing, Ron, is we're going to be inviting the vets up to the factory to let them see the factory, see the operation, understand what we're doing, understand why we're doing it letting them maybe meet some of our customers as well uh, and we'll do that with the vet schools i absolutely love that that's so exciting and a lot of people often say uh where's the evidence around it well apart from the fact that it fits with your dog's biology and it's what they naturally evolve to eat so it's optimal for their, di their digestion apart from the fact that we've seen overwhelming success stories from customers. And frankly, that to us is worth more than any marketing campaign is just to see the customer testimonials. Yeah. Uh, I love seeing those. And in fact, we'll be putting together another film around those shortly. Uh, really, let's never lose sight of the fact we have lots of different types of evidence. There's clinical research in a clinic, there's laboratory research and I think we were the only guys to run a uh, comprehensive survey of customers last year. It was the largest that's been run in the UK. And the statistics around that are incredible. So if you're thinking you want to join Raw Feeding and needed a little bit of reassurance, please, we'll put a link to that survey. Please share it with people. Please come and join our community. Uh, please leave feedback on the podcast. We're here to serve and we want to hear more of what you guys would like to know more about uh and thank you tony once again uh really what what a luxury happy birthday thank you mate. happy birthday to you too take care